Hey guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a two and a half year old toddler named Kylie and I also have a seven month old baby named Mia. Today's video is going to be the fifth and final video in the baby led weaning series that I've been doing. And the topic for this video is kind of managing behavior expectations during the baby led weaning process. I specifically saved this topic for last just so that I could have a chance to kind of accumulate a list of all of the questions that you guys were asking me that were behavior related because I knew they were going to come up. And I know that for some of you guys this has been a much anticipated video so I'm really excited to finally get this out for you guys so the first thing that I want to put out there is that it really depends how old your child is for how you're going to handle different types of behaviors that you're seeing you are certainly not going to respond to a six-month-old baby who has just started the baby led weaning process in the same way that you would respond to an 18 month old who's been doing it for quite some time so you really have to take your child's age into account when considering ahead of time how you might respond to different types of behaviors. I'm not advocating that you let your child get away with certain things just because they're littler. I'm just saying that you do need to approach things a little bit differently because developmentally they're not really going to be able to understand certain things. And I think that will become more apparent as I go through this list of like different possible scenarios. The other thing that I want to mention is that I am not a behavior expert uh, by any means. I'm just a mom who has gone through the baby led weaning process already with a toddler with success and I have a seven month old who is now going through the process currently and we are also having success with her. So I just really wanted to share kind of some of my experiences and what has been working for me along the way in the hopes that maybe it will help some of you guys too. So obviously if there are tips in this video that you don't agree with as far as your parenting style or you feel like that just would not work for your child, then so be it, you know, skip over that tip and kind of move on and maybe you'll find something useful in some of the other pieces of advice that I have to offer. I also want you to consider the fact that some of the behavioral tips and advice that I am going to share in the video today might not work for every child, especially if they have some kind of a medical condition or an eating disorder. So I don't want to make a blanket statement and say that these tips will work for every child because they, they might not really. But if your child is otherwise medically considered like normal and doesn't have any um, health issues or nutritional concerns, then I would venture to say that trying any of the tips or advice that you're about to hear is certainly worth a shot <laughs> in helping to manage kind of how meal times are flowing for you and your child. In our family, we follow Montessori practices when it comes to every aspect of life, meal times included, and a popular refrain in Montessori is to follow the child. So I kind of feel like if you keep that in mind at all times, if you're following your child's specific unique needs and responding to their behavior during during meal times appropriately, then you're going to have a little bit more success with it as opposed to just trying one particular strategy and kind of treating it as a one size fits all solution because oftentimes, unfortunately, that's not the case. So I really wanted to get that out there ahead of time before I jumped into these bits of advice because I unfortunately, as much as I wish I could help each and every single one of you guys with your very specific needs or issues that you've been running into, that's just not within the scope of my experience or my knowledge. And I don't even want to pretend that I can do that for you. But if there is anything in this video that you are able to take away from it and try out and it works for your child, then as far as I'm concerned, I have met my goal in creating this video for you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the list of questions that I have been most confident commonly asked regarding expectations for behavior at mealtimes during baby led weaning. So the first one, and I've kind of mentioned this one in other videos, but I keep getting asked the same question, so I thought it bared repeating, um, is your child learning to properly use a cup to drink from and their utensils? Now, when you're first starting out, you should expect that your baby is going to experiment. They're going to dump cups upside down, and they're going to turn the spoons and the forks the wrong way, or try to eat from the wrong end and that's totally developmentally normal. They're just kind of figuring it out and you have to be as patient as possible in guiding them and reminding them constantly with a smile on your face, you know, oh, the cup goes this way or oh, you have your spoon backwards and helping them turn it around the other direction. So it's a lot of patience on your part, but I can assure you that with enough practice and again, enough redirection from you, your child will eventually pick up on what is the correct way 
and what is working for them to actually get a sip of water or to successfully get a little scoop of yogurt or applesauce or whatever it is from the spoon into their mouth without it spilling all over the place. And if you find that your child is taking a little bit longer to master that skill, try not to get frustrated. It is a very specific fine motor set of skills that they have to learn. I mean, everything from how to hold the spoon correctly to which end it's supposed to go on to how to hold it at the right angle so things don't spill off. It, there's just so many little tiny steps that as adults we take for granted. And you have to remember that they're learning each and every single one of these things. So they need lots of practice and they need your support along the way. Even my two and a half year old who is very good at using a spoon and a fork now still makes a mess from time to time, especially with the spoon and things that tend to be more runny like yogurt. And you just, you can't get mad at them. You know, they're not going to go off to college doing the same thing. Eventually they'll get there, but they are all on their own unique timetable. And as their parent, you just, you kind of have to respect that. So patience is the key when it comes to helping them learn how to properly use their utensils and their cups. The next commonly asked question I get is what about when they start playing with their food and water? Now, this is where the whole age thing comes into play. For babies, of course they're going to play with their food and their water and stick their hand in the cup and play with it or turn it upside down and dump it out or smear food all over the tray or one of my personal favorites, take their food and put it in their water and then drink it. Like there are a thousand different things that your baby wants to explore when it comes to food. It is like the ultimate sensory experience for them because they can smell it, they can taste it, they can feel it. Um, I remember my toddler being fascinated with yogurt the first time and Mia has started doing this actually um, the first time she realized that if yogurt was enough of it was in her palm and she squished it it would make like a squishing noise I remember taking a video of her like squishing it and just laughing and giggling and then squishing it and then laughing and giggling and she thought it was hilarious and again you can't get mad at a baby for that like it's a new experience it's exciting for them and if you're invested in baby led weaning it's just one of those things that you just kind of have to come to expect and make peace with now for older children I would say I mean I don't want to put a specific age on it because every kid is different but I would say once they start reaching like 15 to 18 months the whole playing with food thing you can really start to set some rules around that that they will be able to understand and if they start really playing with their food or kind of being silly with it and it's very clear to you that they know they're just playing um, and they think it's funny because of the reaction perhaps that you're having that's a good time to maybe start setting some rules and what I mean by that is nothing hard and fast you're not sending them to time out or anything as many of you guys already know I'm a very very big advocate of positive discipline which does not use um, punitive consequences and things like that um, but what you can do instead is if you notice they're starting to play with their food or their water simply remove the cup and say oh it looks like you're starting to play with your water you must not be thirsty I'm gonna put the cup over here until later and then same thing with their plate of food if they're just playing and kind of being silly the first thing you need to realize is a they're probably not very hungry if they're playing with it because if they were really hungry, they'd be eating. So typically you tend to see this sort of behavior after a certain amount of time into the actual meal time. They'll eat first and then they start playing. So that's generally a good cue that they're not really truly hungry anymore. So if you start to see them playing, you can take the same approach. You can just remove their plate or if they're you know on a high chair tray, just kind of remove the pieces of food and say, oh, it looks like you're playing with your food. That, that to me, that tells mommy or that tells daddy that you're not hungry anymore. So I'm gonna take it away and we'll get you cleaned up and that's it like you don't really need to do much else and they might have a tantrum the first couple of times that they do that because suddenly you've ended their fun but very quickly like children are not stupid they'll pick up on it real quickly that if they start playing that means meal time's over and if they really are still hungry they're not going to want that to happen and so they'll stop and generally it might just take you saying something like, oh, it looks like you're playing with your food. You must not be hungry. And they'll immediately backpedal and they're like, no, 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 you know, I'm still hungry. And you know, you can leave the food on the tray at that point. But it's really this process of teaching them what is appropriate mealtime behavior at the table or in their high chair. So I would venture to say somewhere up through about 15 months, 
letting them play and explore a little bit with their food and make a little bit of a mess every now and again is not a big thing. I mean, just let them have fun, let them be kids. But if they're, if it's becoming like a constant every single time you have a meal thing, um, then it needs to be addressed at that point because they are old enough to understand and to follow very basic rules and expectations. The other thing that you can try is to offer less food at one time. Oftentimes we, as parents, we wanna make sure that our children have full bellies, so we're very quick to like put a whole bunch of food on their plate and what you're basically doing is giving them a whole bunch of food to play with because they're probably not gonna eat all of it. So what you can try is only offering them a little bit of food and allow them to ask you for more if they're still hungry. This way they're eating everything that they have and then there's nothing left to play with. And again, if they're hungry, they can ask for more. Or you can ask them if they're not verbal yet, like, do you want some more if you're using baby sign language? Um, and if they indicate to you that they're still hungry, then you can give them a little bit more. But that's another alternative that you can try um, kind of as a proactive strategy, I guess, before the playing happens and see if that helps. I would use the same strategies when it comes to spitting out food or water. Um, it, I kind of lump that into the category of playing with their food and just kind of being silly. So again, when they're babies, allow it, you know, maybe you can offer them verbal reminders like, you know, that's not very polite or we don't do that at the dinner table, but you're not really like setting hard and fast rules around it when they're really little. Once they are old enough to kind of understand those expectations, then you can kind of set some rules around it and say, oh, you're spitting out your water. You must not be thirsty. Let me take the cup and I'll go clean it up for you and you can try again next time. Plain and simple. When it comes to throwing food off of the high chair or off of the table, um, I again kind of take the same approach behaviorally speaking to that with my response, um, I would say, oh, it looks like you're throwing your food. You must not be hungry. Here, let me take your plate to the kitchen and we'll get you all cleaned up. And again, that's usually enough to get them to kind of realize that that's not appropriate and that their food is going to be removed and mealtime will end if they continue that type of behavior. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a couple of repetitions for them to really catch on. But as long as you're consistent and you respond the same way every time and they know that if I throw food, mom is going to take my plate away and that there's no question that that's what is going to happen, then they'll stop doing it pretty quickly. Same thing goes for throwing plates or cups or utensils, things like that. One other thing that is worth trying, and I often mention this to people who ask me questions about this, if your baby is having fun just making a game out of throwing food off of the edge of their high chair, you might consider moving them to a small table, like a little Montessori weaning table, or maybe like one of those bed trays that you can purchase for relatively cheap. Um, that's kind of at their level on the floor and have them relocate where they're sitting um, Because oftentimes the fun is watching the food fall from a very far distance and splat all over the floor It's just it's a game It's fun for them and they like to see your reaction if you're getting upset about it, especially they think that's funny So if you can kind of remove the fun factor and they're sitting at a table that's their size There really isn't anything fun to be happening because the food is not falling very far to the floor so you know, it is what it is. So if you have not considered moving them to their own small table for meal times, that is something that I personally would try. I, I did that with Kylie actually. She was in a high chair, I think up until she was about 10 months old and she was starting to kind of play with her food and do that and I moved her to a weaning table and the behavior entirely disappeared. With that said, know that that phase is exactly that. It's a phase. Eventually they do grow out of that and they don't do it anymore. Um, it's just a matter of how much patience you have to last you through the end of that phase. Another thing that parents tend to be concerned about and they ask me about a lot is children who want to get up and leave their table if they're at like a little small weaning table or they're like actively trying to climb out of their high chair because they don't want to be in the high chair anymore during meal times. And I feel like I need to address those two things separately. So I'll start with the high chair. If they're not strapped in and they're actively kind of resisting being in the high chair, it might just be about the fact that not that they're not hungry, but they don't want to be confined especially toddlers, they have to move. It's like a developmental need. So if they're being strapped in and they feel like they can't get up and move when they want to, it makes them antsy. And that's when you start to see some of that behavior crop up. So a solution to that, as I mentioned just in the last question, is potentially considering moving them to their own small table where they do have the ability to get up and move a little bit and wiggle around if they need to. And from a safety point, you certainly don't want them climbing out of their high chair that's really dangerous, especially if they fall down. So so 
if you're experiencing resistance with being in the high chair at the toddler stage, because you probably won't experience that when they're babies, then um, I would consider moving them to a smaller table so that they can get up. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, I don't want my kid to get up in the middle of meal times. I want them to learn to sit down. And again, this is understanding that it, that type of behavior is developmentally appropriate for them at that age. Young babies and toddlers have a need to move. So to expect them to sit in one chair for the duration of a meal and not move at all is not realistic. I mean, being totally honest with you, it's not realistic. Um, you might be lucky and have a kid who is content doing that, but you would be the exception, not the norm. Most kids need to move. They are total wiggle worms in their chairs. And that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your child at all. So if they're sitting at a table, um, like a small kid sized table and they're wiggling around, they're getting up out of their chair constantly, they're trying to leave the table altogether. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can approach this. With younger babies and toddlers, you can allow the movement, um, allow them to get up and kind of move around, stand up at the table even as long as they're not leaving the table and get that movement need urge out of their system. Again, as long as they're staying at the table and they're still kind of actively involved in the meal. There's nothing wrong with that. I know that my toddler personally, she sits in a junior chair at our family table now because she's big enough to get in and out of it herself. And to this day, she still turns herself around in the chair. Like she feels a need to be facing backwards sometimes. And what I've found to be most effective, and even though it does kind of wear on your patience a little bit, is just constant redirection. So let her get the movement out and then, okay, we need to face forward while we're eating. Just a gentle reminder and get her to sit back down and to kind of move on with the meal. So that's that's my best suggestion for you because you can't physically restrain them and make them sit in their chair. And as we just discussed, you don't want to do that anyway because that's just kind of going against everything that nature has intended for these young little busy creatures. Now, if they are actually leaving the table, that is where I would certainly set some limits. Um, you don't want them to think that they can get up and just walk around and leave the table whenever they want because that's not what we do as adults. They need to learn that when you eat, you sit down and you eat your meal and then when you're done you can get up and leave so the best way to do that is a model it yourself do not walk around the house eating and having snacks in the playroom or you know wherever it is that they're hanging out up in their bedroom you have to set some consistent rules around the fact that when we eat we are sitting at the table or their high chair or whatever wherever it is that they're taking their meals um, and you have to be consistent about that you can't make exceptions I know personally that I've made some exceptions like once or twice on occasion and I let my child my toddler have a snack upstairs and to this day she reminds me and will ask on occasion can we eat upstairs and I will tell her no we eat at the table and she says but you let me that one time like they don't forget anything so you have to be really really consistent about that and just kind of hold your ground once you do have them sitting at the table if they're trying to get up during the meal I would treat it the same way that you treat the throwing of food or playing with their food if you see them leave you say oh you're leaving the table. It looks like you must not be hungry anymore. I'm going to take your plate to the kitchen and we can finish the meal at the next meal time or the next snack. And for children who are still hungry, they will very quickly turn around and sit back down because they know they're still hungry and they don't want the food to disappear. And if your child calls your bluff on it and we you know whatever, okay, mom, whatever, and they leave the table anyway, then they really must not have been that hungry. Again, this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. Like some children, if they've got medical conditions, this might not hold true. But otherwise, if you don't have any nutritional concerns with your child, if they are hungry, they will stay at the table. If they are not really hungry, then they're gonna get up and wander. They're ready to move on to the next activity. So in sum, if they leave the table, then you treat it the same way. You remove their plate and the meal and they can have you know, their next meal or snack at the next designated time. The key to this though is not giving in if 10 minutes later they come up to you and say, I'm hungry, or they give you the sign for they wanna eat something, they're still hungry. You have to say, well, you left the table and you that to me meant that you were not hungry anymore, so it's okay, we're gonna have our apple at our next snack. Ugh. Okay, sorry. Mia just woke up from her nap, so she's gonna join us for the remaining part of this video, and it looks like she was sleeping on her hands. She's got finger marks on her forehead. 
But as I was saying, you have to be very consistent about making sure that you're not offering snacks 10 minutes later because then they will call your bluff and think to themselves, well, I feel like playing right now even though I'm still hungry, so I'm gonna leave anyway and I know that mom will give me a snack if I ask for it later. So you don't wanna set that precedent. So if they get up and leave, you tell them that's it, no snacks. Sometimes I even verbally remind my toddler of that if she makes the motion like she's going to get up before I think she's ready. Um, and you know, no snacks until the next meal time. Okay, so quickly, the last two topics that were on my list, I'm actually looking at my phone here, um, was refusing to eat certain foods. If your child is showing you that they don't wanna eat food that you've offered to them, that's okay. As long as you are making sure that you're offering um, healthy options for them and you're giving them the right size portions, if they choose not to eat the food that you've offered, that's 100% okay. A lot of parents are worried that you know their kid's not getting the right level of nutrients, and of, of course you wanna make sure that they're getting the right levels, but any pediatrician will tell you, again, for a medically sound, healthy, no nutrition concerns um, child, that if they choose not to eat it, they'll be okay. You know, their, their tastes change and evolve as time goes on. You just have to keep offering the same types of food. I. <laughs> Do you agree with me? You have to keep offering the same types of food over and over and over again before your child might actually decide that they like it. So don't offer a lot. If it's something that historically your child has kind of turned their nose at and they didn't eat any of it, then don't waste your time and your money preparing a whole bunch of it. Just give them a couple of pieces every time and then once they actually start to eat it, then you can increase the quantity that you offer them each meal. You'll find that babies at this age will basically try anything that you offer to them. So that is really not an issue when you first start baby leg weaning. It's when they get into the toddler phase when they start expressing that pickiness and they start saying, oh, nope, I don't like blueberries today, even though last week they ate blueberries like they were going out of style. So it requires a little bit of patience and persistence on your part in continually offering these types of foods. And eventually it might take months, but you will see your child's tastes start to change. The best example I can give you is um, my toddler Kylie. When she was a baby, absolutely hated, would not eat or touch with a 10 foot pole anything that was um, meat protein, like chicken, steak, beef, meatballs, chicken nuggets, like anything that was meat, she wouldn't touch it. And my husband and I used to joke that we were raising a vegetarian by accident because she just didn't want any of it. But I consistently offered it to her and probably around the age of two, it was like a switch just kind of changed and she started eating like all of the meat that I offered to her without any question. So yeah, just be persistent with it and eventually their taste will change, you know? Just kind of do what you can in the meantime. And the very last topic was the idea of how how to handle behavior when you're traveling. Like, do you bring the cups and the utensils and the things that you need with you? And my answer to that is, it depends how long you're traveling. Um, if you're just going out for dinner, you know, for one meal, you might not need to worry about all of that. Just stick them in a high chair and, you know, try to help them the best that they can with the cup that you've brought or the cup that the restaurant gives you. Um, but I know that for extended travel, I do bring my supplies with me. Um, like the trip that I just went on to Florida. Um, <laughs> you having fun? The trip that I just went on to Florida with my family, I actually brought the little glass for Mia so that she could um, keep practicing even while we were gone. I brought the little spoon and the little fork that were her size. I brought a small fork that was more Kylie's size. I brought the little pocket bibs with me. I brought basically everything that wasn't like overkill so that I could kind of keep her and, and my toddler in their normal routine of eating um, and in that good practice while we were gone. Are you having fun? <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. So yeah, um, on travel, like for extended times, I would say, you know, bring all those supplies with you and set the same expectations. Just because you are not in your normal uh, home environment eating for meal times doesn't mean that you can't expect your child to still sit at the table wherever you are, or at least be sitting during their meals. You know, it's not a free for all just because you're on vacation or just because you're at somebody else's house. You can still keep those expectations um, in line for your child. And as long as you're consistent, they won't question it. For example, at my mom's house, she did 
did have a like a formal dining table, but you know, she didn't have a high chair or anything that was Kylie size. So instead I sat her at one of the um, bar top chairs that was a little bit higher, that was more her height. And I sat her in one of those and made sure that I was there to supervise so she didn't like fall out of it by accident. But that was where she sat for every single meal and every single snack. And I just, I kind of set that precedent the very first day that we were there for the first meal that she had. And then she knew after that, I'd say, okay, go to your chair. You know, we're going to have our breakfast or our lunch. And she would climb right up in the chair and that was it. Honestly, a lot of this is on you as the parent to be consistent and to set those expectations as the parent so that your children aren't questioning it. It's when you become wishy-washy and you go back on what you said and you make exceptions sometimes and things like that, where they start to question your rules and you start to end Enter into that battle arena around mealtimes. So the best that you can, be consistent. That is like my number one piece of advice. If I haven't used that word enough in this video, consistency is key. Yes, there's a bow on your head. She's learning how to pull them off very easily now. I don't know how much longer we have of the cute, adorable bow days. All right, so that is it for my baby led weaning series and all of the tips and advice that I have to offer you regarding um, behavior expectations. If there's anything else that you guys were wondering that I did not answer in this video, then please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'd be happy happy to try to help you out with it. But again, I'm not a behavior expert. I'm just a mom like the rest of you guys. I'm just kind of sharing what I've learned along the way and what's been working for me and for my children. And I'm hoping that you'll find some little takeaway that helps you too. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this baby led weaning series. And if this is actually the first video that you're seeing, there are four other videos that I will link in the description box down below that you can check out that takes you through everything in the baby led weaning process from the day you start until all the stuff that we've discussed here in this video today. So you might find those helpful if you want to check those out. But I think that is it otherwise. Okay, are you ready to go get some milk? and some lunch. What do you think? Yeah. She's like, stop talking mom. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.